social media has made it to where we're continuously connected to each other, no matter how far away from each other we are, no matter where we live. Uh, but it also has showed us how polarizing things are. Has anybody ever, like, you read a news article and then you go look in the comments and you're like, man, this is, we're doomed. Everybody hates each other. That's not really how most people are. That is a reflection of the group of people that are willing to do that. There, and, but those people are the vocal minority. The problem with the vocal minority is you have to be careful that that vocal minority does not become the voice of the majority. Because one of the problems with the majority is that the majority doesn't necessarily speak up. One thing about the vocal minority is that they're so loud, it seems like it's more people that feel this way than there really are. When they vocalize their displeasure, they tend to overwhelm other people. Now, these people tear down the culture of a building. There's always like a cloud that's hanging over these people and they suck the energy out of every room they go into. You know they're gonna complain about having to submit lesson plans. You know they're gonna complain about why we have to do this, why we have to do that. But what we need to ask ourselves is, what do these people really want? I love this quote by George Carlin. He said, inside every cynical person, there's a disappointed idealist. I love this quote because it really hits the nail on the head with the vocal minority. These people have set up an expectation in their mind of how things are supposed to be. And it's an unrealistic expectation that they've set up. Because they've set up this unrealistic expectation that no one can live up to, they're going to be consistently miserable and they're gonna make everybody else miserable because that's their way of dealing with their problems. These are the people that are going to say, restorative practices will not work. But these are the same people that don't think anything works. Name one initiative that's been brought into your school that these people think work. They don't feel good about anything. They don't like field day. They don't like Christmas parties. They don't like anything. They get the enjoyment out of complaining. Their fun is making everybody else miserable. So how do we deal with these people? First thing is don't let them impact how you feel. If you think building relationships with kids makes sense and is going to impact them in a positive way, and it's gonna impact you getting the results you're looking for, then you do it. Don't let, them, don't let them sit there and say circles are stupid. If that's what they feel, then they don't do it and then you go do it. Like, you shouldn't let anybody else's opinion impact the decision that you feel is the right decision. So if all this negativity is around, if you're the only person in your school that believes that building relationships with kids is the way to get kids to learn, then you do that. You be the person that builds the relationships with students. But the thing about it is you're not going to be the only one. You're not the only one, but it feels like you're the only one because you're the only one that knows that this is the way you feel because you don't see how everybody else feels and the ones that you hear that think this is a good decision are the ones that are the vocal minority that are always being negative about every single thing. The problem is the silent majority stays silent. So how do the silent majority keep from being silent? If you circle with your staff, the one thing you're able to do is lower the voice of the vocal minority and finally hear the voice of the quiet majority. Because you can bring in all the initiatives you want, but at the end of the day, if these negative voices get loud enough, they will kill anything in your building. And you know it, because you've seen it. It's happened in every school. Your school's not unique, it happens everywhere. If you don't do circles for anything else, it should just be to give a voice to the silent majority. The silent majority needs to finally start speaking up. That's how we're really going to make changes within our schools. It's time that we stop letting them run our schools. We need to stop letting these people cripple our schools and we need to start empowering the quiet majority to stand up and take control of their schools again.